So it's Louise Martin Chu here for Art Collector, where I got the great pleasure to be speaking to Dr. Vera Mueller about her exhibition, New Works, which is at Melbourne's Sophie Gannon Gallery from the 12th to the 30th of May. Um, hi, Vera. Hello there. It's an unusual connection, but I really enjoy seeing you there. <laughs> Normally on, on phone interviews, that's never possible. So I think this is excellent. And it's so beautiful to have that view of your studio in the background. It really, make, I'm sure it makes us all want to be there. <laughs> um, so look, you've had a really intense six months, which with, you know, I think the major standout installation, um, Kajalia for um, Kwagoma's water exhibition, which closed in, May, in March. Um, and I see that you've, just completed a public art project with UAP for um, Shell Cove in New South Wales. However, we're here to speak about the new works for Sophie Gannon. Um, I understand that like your 2018 exhibition, A Thousand Tides, which was at Bunjil Place, these works focus on Western Port, um, which is the area that you live and work. So firstly, um, you know, you. I see that the work photo focuses on the underwater spaces of Western Port, which is in Victoria's Great Southern Reef, and also Mushroom Reef, which is a marine sanctuary, um, also right at the end of your street. So I'm really interested to know how it affects you to be working on a subject so close to home, um, literally. Well, the, I actually chose my home as close to Mushroom Reef as I could muster. And so my late husband, the artist Philip Hunter, and I moved there in 2016 so that I could go out every day and explore uh, rock pools and those spaces that revealed themselves um, that are full of most exciting specimens and uh, species. I've uh, just, because of our current conditions, uh, for the first time painted and executed, that is made objects. Actually at home, normally I work in the studio that you see here and it's been choreographed a little to pull a few works in. Um, so the existence of that incredible environment and um, so Flinders is located right where Western Port Bay flows into the Great Southern Ocean which is uh, really Bass Strait but unbeknownst to a lot of people there is the existence of the Great Southern Reef that equals the Great Barrier Reef in um, species diversity and um, all sorts of exciting biological facts. So because I painted this new show and making uh, these objects that I will show at a time of the year where you have the opportunity of an extremely low tide, they're the um, equinoctial tides. So they're very, very low and they also have the king tides, of course, which means I could go down and see these little micro gardens that reveal themselves when the water goes out. Normally you can't see them, except of course, if you snorkel around Mushroom Reef. And these tiny spaces, so imagine yourself in this micro garden, they're full of um, most exquisite forms. They're very unfamiliar shapes. They also have a lot of great and unusual color combinations. Some of them really, really um, quite awful. I mean, greens of a lurid, I can't even say it. They are so lurid that if I painted them, um, people would probably say, this is just, I can't look at it. Anyway, these discrete microenvironments give me a lot of, um, um, material from which I can work and the idea of all of the work that I do is to actually draw attention to these environments. Um, and so I see that your first, your initial training was as a scientist um, and you know well, like we can see with the work to your right as I look at you on the screen, the green one, um, these sculptural installations have really extraordinary detail and you know, they remind us of the natural phenomena that we might see if we're snorkeling or scuba diving. But they're not, we can see they're not natural forms. So 
where are you taking us with these? What is the, what's your kind of rationale? Well, I, I think I employ strategies um, when we sort of look at it that the surrealists were familiar with, which is often the combination of unusual shapes. And that's why the surrealists too were, of course, so interested in these reformations. They corresponded directly with a, an alien dream world. But um, in my case, my job that I've defined for me is not to illustrate anything, but to conjure more the spatial, ab uh, the spatial aspect of these spaces, which is entirely otherworldly and also incredibly beautiful, um, incredibly intricate. And I think that we live at a time where it would be very, very useful if we paid close attention to these natural phenomena. And because they are so carefully calibrated, these micro niches that you look, if you look at that at uh, Mushroom Reef, you can see how fragile they are. They depend on good water quality. They depend on particular temperature zones. And if you look more closely, like kids like to do in rock pools, you can't help, that's my belief, to develop a great degree of empathy. And out of empathy comes uh, the responsibility of looking after those environments. And that gives me my uh, the background from which, or vantage point from which to make work. Um, given the, uh, I was lucky that I trained as a microbiologist, so I looked through a lot of microscopes. I also learned to sleep on them if I had gone out the night before. So <laughs> I um, remember that time very fondly in Munich where I could go out into to a nightclub, to a jazz club where I met my first husband and then return to university and look at these exquisite forms. I used to um, look at Bavarian lakes and get water samples from my professor and then analyze uh, microalgae. So that background gives me a kind of library of forms, of patterns. I'm used to looking at this and out of all of this information, that I look at in my rock pooling activities or snorkeling, um, fossicking around in Western Port and um, at Mushroom Reef. It gives me a catalog, a library, just like behind your own, um, you have your, all of your books, you have all of your references. So I have a catalog of these things. And out of that, I can create unusual con uh, constellations and combinations. And this piece here is one of those that I really, really like. Um, it's just a sort of asparagus form that's dotted up. And then it's got curly hair that's just from an old wig, um, plastic wig from, from the op shop. So to answer your question, that goes back to the surrealist principle of, uh, of um, combining uh, unusual parts, bits and pieces, and they form um, something new and an independent object that reminds you of an environment. That's, that's my strategy. And in the paintings, it's pretty much the same strategy. Um, and I support the painting practice through making collages. And once uh, there is a group of collages that I will show, um, that um, looks at the combination of very, very small fragments of paper and they then shape up to remind you of the surface of certain shells, and certain forms that I find on the reef, repetitions of the same, creating um, a new little object. And obviously a lot of that, the detail that's in your library and um, the kind of tactile tactility and the fragility of these things that you know we might see in the sea is reflected in the process with which you make them um, and it's a very it's a handmade and very painstaking process I understand um, so why is that kind of slow steady development of detail why is that important in the way we appreciate and understand the work 
Well, it's, it's a personal conflict. I'm the most impatient person you'll ever meet, yet I've chosen a process that is in direct contradistinction to that. And I think it probably has to do, I've often been asked this question, and I reflect on it myself. Um, the slow process allows me to think about the subject matter that I'm dealing with. And it's something that I really enjoy. I've also enjoyed to engage with this process completely. Oh, sorry, that is my phone. Sorry, I'll switch that off. Um, to engage with this in this time where I find myself in this huge studio now and Philip used to work on the other side and his studio is left behind uh, as he did when he went to hospital and then died. And so this artist, um, as it's been said many times, engage or like to engage, or a number of us do, um, it's a process that I equal to meditation. Um, it's something that I engage with as well. But just like a microbiologist who spends a lot of time on a microscope trying to identify small details, and I used to draw from the microscope for my professor, it's, um, in a way, it's part of research practice because just like um, a book that you might write, it's a long time spent on reflecting on a subject that will give you the richness of what you, the richness of the whole subject feel that you're dealing with. And I think that um, a lot of artists enjoy that process as do writers. The accumulation of those processes always astound me. I mean, sometimes I have to um, actually crack the whip on myself when I say, oh, God, I can't do another three nights just putting dots on some of these um, objects that I make. But I do know if I sustain that process that it will accumulate um, and where the accumulation of the repetitions um, there is particular magic, as we all know from Yayo Kusama, with her infinity fields. It's the layering of layering of layering, layering of um, um, visual fields of information where, where this magic unfolds. And it's something that I really enjoy. And that allows me to step out of the impatience into something that is to sustain work. So I work like a gardener. You know, I plant and it's something that I like to do. I have a very nice garden in Flinders that I tend to. So these, these extended processes um, are valuable to me. Yeah, I think they're valuable to us too. And I think you're right, there's a complete magic in looking at those installations, um, particularly the really huge ones that I saw in the water exhibition um, in Brisbane. Um, they're really special. So thanks so much, um, Vera, for sharing your process with us this morning. And um, I urge everybody who can to go to Sophie Gannon to see the New Works exhibition. Yes, it's called uh, Aqua Fleurel. It's a made-up word. I make up, make up all of the titles for my uh, works, and it deals with micro gardens out at Mushroom Reef.